Thank you, Mr. Parthi. Uh, I have spoken on this subject in a number of conferences. Now, this is very common everywhere. Everybody wants to have power, and it should be made available to them at the cheapest price. War in Ukraine and Russia has brought in a major change in everyone's thinking that perhaps coal-based power may not be the last option which people were thinking before. All countries who had fixed targets on getting rid of coal by certain dates are now having a rethinking and that is why I try to rename my presentation as Power, Climate Change, and Coal. Are we friends or foes? Friends or enemies? So that's what we would like to analyze in my presentation. OK, catastrophic fires in Australia and USA and some places in Europe to COVID-19 pandemic. Global disasters have been visiting us much more frequently now, leading us to believe that we need to take a relook at how we live and how we use the natural resources for our personal benefits. It's a very important sentence, how we live and how we use the natural resources for our benefits. We all know that a certain section of society benefits from economic processes leading to environmental degradation. This has been happening for the last 300 years. This global environmental damage is passed on to humanity at large or to the future generations. Now, who pays the price for it? It's the weaker sections of the society which are the hardest hit and paying the most. Now, scientists have put their heads together to find out ways and means to tackle the climate challenge, as we see. They feel that generation of energy through fossil fuels is at the heart of the climate challenge. Greenhouse gases formed because of the combustion. They blanket the earth and trap sun's heat, leading to the global warming. They also feel that fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas are the largest contributors of global climate change, and they count for something like 75% of greenhouse gases, which we call GHGs, and nearly 90% of the carbon dioxide emissions which are produced there. Now, the science is very clear. To avoid worst impact of the climate change emissions, emissions need to be reduced to half by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. So if we have to do that, this requires ending our reliance on coal, fossil fuel, and investing in alternative sources of energy that are considered clean, accessible, affordable, sustainable, and reliable. So all these things have to be met. Now, why net zero? Why the people are talking of net zero? Net zero does not mean that we have to stop the absolute use of this fossil fuels. Net zero means that it requires us to cut the GHG emissions to as close to zero as possible. With anything which is remaining emissions, they are reabsorbed into the atmosphere by oceans and forests, for instance, you know. Scientists have 
also shown that in order to avert the worst impact on climate change and preserve a livable planet, global temperature needs to be kept at 1.5 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial levels. Now, currently what we see is that it is about 1.1 degree centigrade warmer than what it was in late 1800, and emissions are continuing to rise every year. Now, to cut it under 1.5 degrees centigrade, COP26 was the time when everybody got together and agreed that the required emissions to be reduced by 45% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. That was the desire everybody wanted. 70 countries including world's biggest polluters, China, USA, European Union, have set a net zero target covering 76% of the global emissions. So now the question is, are we on track to reach the net zero by 2050? Answer is no. Current national climate plan of 193 countries, this is going to lead us to increase of almost 11% in GHGs by 2030. Three zero. Now the top seven polluting countries, China, USA, Euro European Union, Russia, Brazil, they account for half of the global emissions. The group of 20, which includes India, of course, are responsible for 75% of the GHGs. Today, there are around 8,500 coal power plants in operations worldwide, producing almost 2,000 gigawatts of electricity everywhere. They generate over third of all electricity and produce fifth of the global GHGs everywhere, more than any other source. So when we are talking of cutting global emissions is a priority, more than 300 new power plants are to come, come online in the next five years. This is all over the world. Now, if you look at the geography, most, exist, most of the existing coal-fired generation is in emerging and the developing economies, and 60% of the electricity is responsible in chi countries like China and India is based on coal. So we don't have to go very far. They're right here, We, India and China dependent very much on coal-fired power. So what about India now? India will continue to depend on coal-fired power for the next 20 years. India's coal production is likely to increase to 1,500 million tons from the present level of something like 750 to 800 million tons now. So what do we need to do? Now, there are large number of plants which are old, inefficient, and need to be scrapped. They had planned to scrap them, but now, in view of the new emerging scenario which has come in post the, the war, instructions had been given to discontinue their use, but now, in view of the emerging power demand, government has revise these instructions to continue to use them till alternate power sources are made available. Now, the new plants which are being set up, they are definitely much more efficient than the earlier ones. They are based on HELE technology, which means high efficiency, low emissions. They are more efficient and reduce emissions. Then, 
We also have planned to put FGD, the fuel gas desulfurization has been postponed because of its cost. How long can we continue to postpone it? It's something which we need to ponder. The date has to be fixed much closer to what is in the mind of the government as of now. Then we also have to increase our reliance on power plants based on renewables. India's non-fossil -power, non power generation capacity will grow up to 174 gigawatts by 2022. This is definitely a remarkable achievement if we are able to do it by that time. And finally, there must be an attempt to reduce wastage of electricity and save as much of electricity by efficient use. Along with this, also efforts to reduce GHGs have to be on a global scale. You know, you can't get away from it. There is no reason for injecting sulfur into the atmosphere. Now the advanced countries, Western countries responsible for the biggest pollution load have to provide funds to the emerging economies to finance their shift to renewables. Somebody has to pay for it and it is the advanced countries which have to bell the cat. A start has already been made with the establishment of loss and damage fund where for the first time Indonesia is going to get some money from those Western countries to, re to finance their renewable capacities there. We also have to find out alternative uses of coal which are less damaging to the environment, coal gasification, hydrogen, not the, not the green hydrogen, but the blue hydrogen, is going to come out of coal. That is one of the possibilities. We also have to make sure that in case we do not have to repeat, get into a situation like the one which we are facing now, that the world should not fight a f war in the next 20 years, as the war, any war, upsets the cost balance for most of the world. As it has happened, it's only a wishful thinking. We are only hoping that this should not happen anywhere else. Now, all this is going to be a long and not an easy battle for ourselves. Let's wish, wish the government and the world all the luck so that we are able to implement and implement whatever we have talked and so that we are able to live in a climate where we are able to reduce the temperature increase to less than 1.5 degree as the whole world wants it today. Thank you very much.